Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. For this question, we're given the equation z squared minus 2z plus p equals 0. We're told the roots are alpha and beta, and we're told that p is some real number where p is greater than 1. So the question has three parts. We've got to show that alpha and beta are not real. We want to show the relative positions of the points a and b, which each represent alpha and beta on an argand diagram. And then if we're told that the triangle AOB is equilateral, we need to use that to find alpha, beta, and p. So clearly we're dealing with a complex numbers question. That hint is given to us in part one. Um, the student who sent this through actually only asked me to do part two and part three. But I'll work through all three parts because you, you're going to need to use your result from part one to then tackle part two and part three. So if I just jump in and, and we start with part one here. So we've got our equation z squared minus 2z plus p is equal to zero. We use our quadratic formula. So we know the roots of these will be um, negative b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac on 2a. That's the generic way to write the quadratic formula. In our case, we're dealing with a of 1, b of negative 2, and then c is equal to p, which is our number that we know is greater than 1. So here we'll get z is equal to um, negative negative 2, or 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared, minus 4 times 1 times p, and all of that over 2 times 1. So I'll just work through the steps to simplify this. I'll, I'll work through step by step just to make sure there's no mistakes and that you can follow along. So we'll do this one little step at a time. We'll go 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4p on 2. That gives us 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 and I'll just factor out the 4 so we'll get 1 minus p on 2, and then I'll write that as 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 1 minus p on 2, which is essentially 2 plus or minus 2 root 1 minus p on 2. We can cancel out all these 2s, and that will give us 1 plus or minus root 1 minus p. So therefore what we're getting is we're getting the roots alpha equals 1 plus the square root of 1 minus p and we'll get beta equals 1 minus the square root of 1 minus p. Now the key is to remember that p is greater than 1, that's what we've been told. So we can say that if p is greater than 1 then 1 minus p must be less than 0. And that means the square root of 1 minus p is uh, not real. Now if that's true, that means alpha and beta are not real because alpha and beta both have the square root of 1 minus p in them. So uh, the student who sent this through was able to um, I assume get that far because they haven't asked me to, to answer that. But I wanted to work through it because knowing alpha and beta are going to help us to do part two. So I'll just come over to a new page for part two. Because for part two we're asked to um, essentially say alpha is A and beta is B. So just a different way of reflecting them on an argand diagram. So that's essentially um, a chart. I'll just draw up a set of axes um, where instead of this being what we might normally refer to as a Cartesian plane where we've got kind of X and Y and they're both real, um, the argand diagram is simply a way of us reflecting complex numbers um, on a set of axes. So we'll have our, um, I'll still call it x and y, 
But what we're really thinking of is a real axis and an imaginary axis. And what we do is we use the generic form of complex numbers of z, I'll just use z here, is equal to x plus i y, and in this case i is equal to square root, the square root of negative 1. So what we want to do is get our alpha and beta in this format x plus i y, and then we can simply do our plot. So if I say here, um, I'll call it z1 is equal to alpha, and that's equal to, so for alpha we, we had 1 plus the square root of 1 minus p, which I'll rewrite to get it in this format, 1 plus the square root of negative 1 times p minus 1. So all I've done there is just reverse the sign and brought out the negative 1 because that lets me then write it as 1 plus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of p minus 1, which equals 1 plus i root p minus 1. And we see we've now got it in this format, x plus i, y. In this case, x will be 1 and y will be the square root of p minus 1. Now we'll do the same for beta, so we'll say z2 is equal to beta is equal to 1 minus the square root of 1 minus p, and we'll do a fairly similar set of steps, 1 minus the square root of negative 1 p minus 1, which equals 1 minus i root p minus 1. And that's really it. Sorry, I've just done that in one less step. But essentially we've got x here is 1 again, and y will be negative p minus 1. So using that, we've kind of got what we need to plot these points. Um, I'll just pick an arbitrary amount. We'll call this length 1. And up here we'll go... I'll call that the length square root of p minus 1. I'll call that negative square root p minus 1. So we're going to have the point A as 1 root p minus 1. I'll call that A. And the reason I know that's A, I mean it's kind of arbitrary which one's alpha, which one's beta. But we're told in the question that A um, will be above the real axis. So that's kind of how I know to put A there. And B will be 1 negative root p minus 1. So that's our two points, and that's kind of where we can stop for part 2. Now part 3 says, uh, or it gets us to consider, or it tells us, that this triangle OAB So we're told that that triangle is equilateral, or in other words, all the lengths of all the sides are equal. So I know that this height here is the square root of p minus 1, and I know that this height here is the square root of p minus 1, which means the whole line is 2 root p minus 1, or double that length, which means this line must be 2 root p minus 1. And this line must be 2 root p minus 1. And I also know that each of these angles is 60 degrees. And also having this line run through, we know that these are both 90 degree angles. So what we can do um, to make use of our, or, or to work out p and alpha and beta, um, we, can, we can make use of this knowledge that we've now got with this triangle. And actually, I don't even need the whole triangle. I'm just going to take one half of it being a right angled triangle. So what I'll do is over on the next page, part three, I'm going to redraw my right angled triangle. So just to remind myself, this would be the origin in our chart. And this would be point A. And this would be root p minus 1, 
this would be 2 root p minus 1 and this would be a length 1. And now using good old Pythagoras, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, I think we're going to have enough to solve for p. And once we've got p, if we come back to our alpha and beta, notice p is the only thing we need to then have alpha and beta. So let's just do this. So we'll get 2 root p minus 1 squared is equal to root p minus 1 squared plus 1 squared. So we'll get 4 p minus 1 is equal to p minus 1 plus 1. So we can cancel those. So we get 4p minus 4 is equal to p. Let's just do some rearranging. 3p is equal to 4. So p is equal to 4 on 3. So that's part 1. We've got p. So now we'll go alpha is equal to, let's make sure I get this right, 1 plus the square root of 1 minus p which equals 1 plus the square root of 1 minus 4 on 3, which equals 1 plus the square root of 3 on 3 minus 4 on 3, which is negative 1 on 3. And we could leave it there or we could go and write 1 plus root 1 on 3i. We could, if we want to put it in that format. And from there we'll we'll get, um, that's alpha, and we'll get beta as being 1 minus root 1 on 3 times i. Because you may remember beta was the same as alpha, just the minus. But otherwise everything else was the same. So there you go, we've got p, we've got alpha, we've got beta. And that's all there is to that question. So I think the key was kind of knowing right away that you're dealing with um, complex numbers, um, kind of not getting put off by the terminology of the argand diagram. It's really just a, a set of axes um, and what ended up being quite a simple, simple plot. But then uh, I guess combining that with knowledge of equilateral triangles to then put together the pieces to go, okay, we've got enough here to solve for P, which then lets us work out alpha and beta. So hopefully you were able to follow all that and uh, tick boom.